Oh wow, I get to finally talk about Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, it's just okay. It is the most above average superhero movie in a while, and it's not much worth defending. It is as standard as it could be, but without what makes it good, it is just a standard superhero movie with a very, very flawed script. But good performance and heart make this movie have something to make this worth watching for, but not much else. I didn't see this in theaters, so that's why I'm reviewing it now, and I don't know if I have much new to say, but if there's anything I can add to the conversation, not really. I swear I grew up with Blue Beetle, but more so seeing the character make appearances in other DC properties like Batman Brave and the Bold or Young Justice, but doing research on the character's own history, I don't think... This here is the best representation of that. I don't think in this movie, yeah, if you're like, oh, well, I finally get to see Blue Beetle on the big screen, you'll see the costume, but more so, I think people will probably go into this not knowing it. Like, the hair is not that popular, but it could be. So, with that being said, what's the plot? Plot is, is that Jaime Ramos is coming home at, from college, but, you know, not having a new job or and his family struggling with their own financial issues. He reluctantly takes a job cleaning houses at the whatever character Susan Sarandis, Susan Sarandis, her character said, Victoria Lord, Cor, Cor, her name is Victoria Cor, Victoria Cor is the villain in this movie, Victoria Cor, so she, he impresses her niece Jenny Cor, who offers her a job at Cor Industries, so when he comes in the next day, he's told to hide a secret thing that when he shows it to his family, it turns out it's a space scarab that transforms him into the Blue Beetle. Despite not wanting his power, he must rise to the charge before evil Susan Sarandon does evil. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to write this as a criticism. Susan Sarandon is the most, oh, she's just here to be the villain and nothing else performance. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. I like the family stuff. I like this family. They felt like a real family. The moments he had with each of them, and I don't know if it's because of the personal reasons, but when a certain scene happens, it did get me to cry. But other than that, the movie's just okay. I didn't hate it, but it could have been so much more, and I don't really feel like there's much talk worth talking about. But people already stopped talking about it, so what is there really to do? This movie has its problems and pros, and I don't care to mention it. I just stand by it's okay, and I'll move on by saying if I had to watch the movie again, I wouldn't mind, but this is by far... Hey, uh, man, this is so far from what it could have been movie I seen. With that being said, I give Blue Beetle a six out of ten. Oh my God, it's Disney's Haunted Mansion again! So my mother and brother went to go see this movie with their friends uh, when it came out of theaters, and I didn't since I never cared too much. So watching it now on Disney Plus, I made the right choice. Though if it means anything. If it means something, this isn't one of the worst movies I've seen this year. I know some other people thought it was, I don't. But this is a bad movie for so many reasons. It's been so many years since I've seen the Eddie Murphy movie, which, the uh, 2000s, whatever, whenever that came out in 2000, which, look, I remember being okay at best, even as a kid. i never been to Disneyland, so I don't know how authentic this is to the ride. Honestly, my favorite experience with the Haunted Mansion was a Muppet hour-long special that I know no one else cares about, but the music was good, the jokes were funny, and I actually liked the art gods we went through, as it lacked length product placement. So that's, uh, you know, maybe that's a criticism for that short. You know, it should have had more product placement, like this movie. I've seen so many people bugged by the product placement, where they keep referencing so many things, like, they got this place on Zilla, or, hey, I got this notebook at Costco, because that's where you go for notebooks. And even this powerful scene where Lakeith Stanfield's character talks about the last time he saw his life, and in post, they clearly added, oh, and on her way to get uh, Taylor Tots, she uh, also went on to get Baskin Robbins. What got me through this movie was this cast, though. The, I should get into the premise. Okay, so keep in mind, I will not name any character since each character was that for me watching this movie. Just the actors. So Rosario Dawson and her son uh, buy this haunted mansion of hundreds of ghosts, and I like the idea of them being unable to leave, where if they do, the ghosts follow them and haunt them till they come back to this place. That That's a great idea of like, oh, okay, if so if they just left, why would they come back? You know, or you know, why would they stay in this haunted place and not just leave? That's genius! My god, I wish I was using such a better movie, like that FNAF movie. I'll, I'll get to that review in a bit. Anyways, where was I? Oh, yeah. I uh, just... You know what? I wish this movie had more great ideas, is what I'm gonna say. So she recruits Lakeith Stanfield as this grieving social locker shotgun who has a camera to see the supernatural, Owen Wilson as this fake priest, and Tiffany Haddish as this medium to help out. Also, the, the end of Vito's in there, too. First of all, half of these characters could have been cut or combined. Combine Dan DeVito and Owen Wilson's character, then combine Rosario Dawson's character and Tiffany Hash characters together. Like, have Tiff Rosario Dawson be the medium, because she's just a standard mother character, and she's not interesting. Like, come on, give Rosario Dawson more to do. Now, 
I'll get to Tiffany Hash in a second, but DeVito. So, I know Danny DeVito was in this movie because, oh, hey, he's Danny DeVito. He's popular. I remember people, were, they were hoping, oh, my God, Danny DeVito and Owen Wilson in the movie together? But DeVito doesn't need to be in this movie. When his character has his heart condition, I thought it was building up to something. It doesn't. He could have been cut. Owen Wilson has a ton of great moments, and Tiffany Hash never failed to make me laugh. I thought she was the funniest part of the movie. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield, on the other hand, though, is the emotional center of this film. It was way too good for this movie. Like, he brings a powerhouse performance to this nothing script. But what makes this movie worth watching, if you want something worth to see in this movie, is that. So, uh, what about everything else? Well, the special effects are nothing special. The production design is average, and I can easily tell this movie had several rewrites since it feels like they had two different explanations of why this mansion had hundreds of ghosts, because when they go to another mansion, I could tell what the other backstory was going to be. Which would have made more sense for this movie is nothing villain when the backstory they do go with should impact the characters more when the villain is more of an antagonist rather than a straight up bad guy. Because when there's this twist with the sun at the end, it should have been explained sooner since the characters know they shouldn't be hiding this information, but exists just for plot. If it wasn't for this great cast and this nothing movie, and maybe it is because I waited to watch it at home, it would have been worse. But it wasn't that bad. But I get why others despise it. For what it could have been, this is a below average waste of time that could have done so much more. But rather roll over it in its grave, this movie is just still kicking to come alive at any point. And that's a shame. So I give the Haunted Mansion remake a 4 out of 10.